Live. All right, bang bang. Welcome to the mid show, uh, presented by Miller Light. Miller Light. The draft is over, and so are all the draft watch parties. And if you're anything like us, you celebrate with some good friends and some nice ice cold Miller Lights, because what with a taste you can count on, there's nothing better than Miller Light. Miller Light knows that beer lovers want their light beer to taste like beer. That's why they brew a light beer that's light on calories, not on taste. Because what's the point of having a beer if you can't taste it? Um, Got to taste your beer. Got to taste every your beer. time. Uh, you'll be Dan. You're going to uh, Luke Combs this weekend. I am. Yeah, the Miller. Uh, Plenty of Miller will be there for me. Of waiting. course, Soldier yep. Field. Um, Dan and I going together. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I think that's that. the plan, right? Yeah, yeah. For there now, we, for now, unless you get disinvited, since he uh, he has the access to the tickets. So Luke I got to be boys. super nice the rest of the week. Maybe I'll buy him some Millers to get in his good graces. That'll there work. You know. Luke Combs boys drinking some Millers at Soldier Field. Uh, till kickoff comes around again. Enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. Go to MillerLite.com uh, slash Redline if you want Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Or you can pick up Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. All right. Uh, welcome back. Um, a lot has happened, I feel, since our last time. I we, feel like it's been a year since I know. our we last went, live show. No, we did the draft. We went out to New York for the draft. We'll talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about the weekend. Uh, I would like to start with White Sox Dave's beer pour. Um, if you could pull that up on the monitor. White Sox Dave challenged last week was against a bartender, and they had to pull a clean beer off the tap. And uh, Viva La Stool posted this, I saw. And there were quite a lot of people in your mentions, Dave, talking shit about how you can't pour a beer. Okay. Any retaliation? All right, you here. This is this is. I'm going to take all the jokes out of it for a moment. If you want, if you if you want to actually do it, rewind the video. So Tom was right in front of me, mm -hmm. and I I started at an angle, and the cup got uh, stuck on the other tap. Right next to it, and I did it again. You can, you see oh, oh yeah, it yeah. That's why. That's why. Because you always got to check the tape. Got to go to the. You tape. always give a little. You don't just stick the glass right under it. You right. give it a second, mm -hmm. a second. Just clear the pipes a little bit. I did that, and then I got stuck on the other tap because I was trying to have a good angle for Tom. So then I had to change it up, and then it was like pouring over, obviously. But in the end. He didn't fill his glass all the way, and he had way too much head on a light beer. You don't do that for a light beer. Now, Dave, what would you say to the people who would say to you, why are you coming in from the side when the tap, when the, when the nozzle looks like it's facing towards you? I think he's doing it the right way there. You don't think so? Well, that's you would, you would go in not, straight? Yeah, I, that's, what, that's, I would what go, the, that's what the masses were saying. That's what Tom said, too, I believe. Hmm. Um, that's why I did it. So the camera could have a little better angle. Obviously, it was a, oh, a bad so mistake. Yeah. And I and I never mentioned this on the camera. I'm surprised you guys didn't see it live because the glass got hooked on the other on the wow. other beer. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? There was some showmanship involved. He was looking at oh, the camera just, guys. Yeah, he's just out for the. He's a team guy. That's it wasn't. It, it wasn't necessarily me Dang being it. a team guy. It's like all right, they have sure to see is. this correctly. Danny, yeah. you said that's a first. Do you believe mm -hmm. that, Danny? No. No. I don't <laughs> at all. He does not believe. I don't. I don't care what Danny camera. thinks for so literally when you, anything. So when you you were very adamant that that was a good pour it was during the pour. challenge. Did you see the? So glass? when you watch back the tape, are you like, ah, maybe it wasn't? Or are you doubling down? That's that's the, the part that the, I feel like is tough. Like that explanation where it's like, hey, I got it hooked, and I was trying to have that's, a good you angle. You can see it right I, there. I'm not denying it. Yeah. I think that's a perfectly reasonable excuse for leaking half the beer and not having a great pour. But I the, the but thing that the I end, can't that's get what my brain like. around is how yeah but you still I wouldn't say that it was right a well there. executed pour your third no. your third pour was perfect but that pour that's on camera right now Wait. you kept saying that was a good pour because look at the glass in the end but, but look at the process no, once it was, who cares about the process if, if, part if of the you're the main bartender at a bar that pours beers like that you're out of business in a week because your profits are down the drain yeah. we're talking about the end result no we're also For talking about the middle beer. as well no that, we're not that affects yeah. the grade see this Does is what not? you guys did this is what you guys did in this entirely fucking just thrown together bullshit <laughs> that's also you guys, a legitimate gripe. First of all, you you change the voter. 
in the second one. Well, can we focus And second of all, you didn't say we were t- t- talking about full presentation or anything. You guys expected that to be three quarters foam and have to let it sit there for 20 minutes. That's what you guys were all expecting. No. And then, mm-hmm. yeah. I had no expectations. Don't back tell me heads, what I was expecting. In the back I had no heads, expectations. You, you can't were, tell me what I was expecting. That's a perfectly poured beer right there. Yeah, there That were, looks like a nice beer f- end result, but like you do, you lose points if you pour half a beer down the drain. You don't because you were talking about like we we didn't why said any. Why can't you just be like, hey, my third beer? Why can't you guys just be like, hey, Tom, Cause you fucked his up? Because you fucked his up. I don't care about wasting Tom's beer <laughs> at all. <laughs> but if you're if you're trying to execute a good pour, you can't say it's a good pour. Look when, at that right there. Ha, when you're, what does it matter the process to get to because that right it there? Matter, of because the glass is super sticky and now sticky. However, yeah, what? that's and not wet. sticky at all. It How was. You, I touched yeah, it. it is. There's beer all over it. Yeah, you and didn't it's touch wet. it. I chugged it right after that. No, no, well, I we drank it. Check that tape too. I remember. Touching okay, it. but that's a perfectly poured. No, ex- well, yes, it is. At the it end. looks like yeah. a perfectly poured beer. It was not poured perfectly. Correct. It, boy, perception's reality. No, it's not. Yes, it is. We watched all the beer go on the side of the glass. We just watched it down the drain. But I, I think you should just be like, no, hey, I will, I will I, never, I ever, ever, I, ever. I got the ever. nozzle thing and that fucked me yeah, up. Yeah, well, that That's did what, fuck me but up. But like, and then you're like, once I got dialed in with my process, I poured a perfect beer that was better than Tom's. So it's just like he does this every day. I don't. That to me would be a more compelling argument than okay, trying fine. to convince everybody that that's a well poured beer because it wasn't. Objectively, it wasn't. It's a pint glass of light beer. If you're worried about getting your fingers sticky because you're drinking beer at Who that likes shit sticky hole fingers? bar, Who likes sticky you fingers? You were just talking uh, Thursday or Friday when we recorded the draft. You like sticky shit in bars. Oh, I like sticky floors. Oh, sticky. Yeah. Okay, so now like sticky's little, okay. Yeah, now sticky's mm-hmm. okay. If I feel it on my shoes. Ah, uh, there's a big difference. Yeah, you sticky's know that. okay yeah, there because yeah, it's not no, a competition. I know, but I wouldn't want to walk barefoot on a sticky floor. Yeah, you don't want floor. maple syrup on your mitts. Exactly. But like if you're walking through a shitty college bar. Wa- like, that's what endearing. country club is. Yeah, but I still, I'm not taking my shoes off in country club. Yeah, but you go in there. Because I don't like the stickiness on my You go in there kind of expecting a little... Grime. Shitty, yeah, a little, little grime. Gr- a little grime, a little grease. And that's what makes Country Club the only good bar in that entire fucking area. To I, me, I like Old Crow, too. Yeah, Old Crow's, yeah, I do like Old Crow. No, Dave, I would. I obviously disagree. I think you don't. I think you didn't. You know, I think that the whole process matters. I don't think the end result is the only You guys didn't matter. say that at all. You guys said who can. That's like if you're at the but, Olympics and you're doing the pommel horse and your legs are flying all over the cl- place, but then you stick the landing. It's like you have to do the Correct. whole thing that, right. That, mm-hmm. that, that's an yeah. awful analogy. That's an awesome, mm-hmm. that's a perfect analogy. And Tom didn't even fill his glass, and he does this a thousand times a day. He, yeah, I, I... Would you be more pissed about the sticky fingers or having a half inch where you... But that's an exaggeration, I feel like, too. I thought his his yeah. beer looked... It was like maybe a millimeter off. Yeah, yeah maybe one Let's centimeter more than Let's his. see his. I don't, I don't know think it's, it's in, in that, that video, clip. so you have to pull up the full YouTube. This oh, this is the full YouTube? Okay. So here's Tom. So Tom goes sh- straight ahead. Yeah, like and he I had said. to he had to let his sit for ten minutes because it was nothing but head. And then when that's it, not true, but that that to me, that's and then when it settled, a, that's a great pour. That's, that's like that should be in a commercial. And he and, and like, what? Go back to that still shot. His hat. It's like a big sip was taken out. So of here's what here's what uh, Google dot com says, uh, from Brew Bus Brewing confusing uh generally you should try to pour your beer to have half an inch to one inch of head okay and tom said every single beer had and he even admitted this on film i don't know if it made the final cut but he said that his that every beer is supposed to have a half inch i was told like i remember being told a quarter inch for a light beer and a half inch for a heavy beer granted this is 15 whatever years ago okay but look, Tom Tom's isn't even full. Now I will I will defend Dave here about this. The amount of people who just sunk, come so far over the top. Oh yeah. About like what a fucking idiot. Like it's, it's like, dude, if this was your like first time on this tap, you never like. There's a chance you wouldn't have poured a great beer either. That 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 and that Tom I do. Didn't that pour a good beer. beer. It's the double down for everyone. It's you not admitting it. That's what gets people. Yeah, going. true. Like I, I could, yeah. I could, I could reason with those people for Dave. Not but admitting like, it. I, okay, but these here. people were taking the video in a vacuum for twenty. I, I didn't even like. I didn't even feel like getting into it with the internet over a fucking beer pour. Sure. So I, I just disengaged all of them. But in the end, like my beer 
is better than his beer. Like Kelly and Vegas I, saying this I, can't I, be real. I fucked up. I fucked up the like the overfill and all that. Absolutely. Okay. All end, right. We're making progress. But I, that's go. not what. That's <laughs> not go. what the the score was. This is like therapy. Like every who week had the, the <laughs> who had the better challenge. end product? Who had the better end but product? But that's that's not all it was about. Yeah, you guys didn't say that until the end. But like it's until but, I mean, you guys like, decided. Like that's implied. Do, yeah. Do you think pouring half the beer all over the glass would affect your pouring grade? I look at which beer do you want to drink more. I still think it's the a one toss that's up. not wet. Yeah, I still think that's a toss-up. It's up. a glass in summertime talk- in Wrigley. There's going to be condensation Shh. on it anyways. Dave, come on. Come on. Have you ever grabbed a can? Take the L. Uh, I'm condensation's not. not the same as a sticky. Like, I, 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 I think this guy is is good. Like, there's – okay. I think this guy, the Jake, he said, great result, horrible slash disrespectful process. That's yeah, all fine. it is. Can, sure. you, can you admit that my gymnastics uh, analogy was really good? It wasn't because it was. It, it was, was a like great we, analogy. It was perfect. Like the way I thought of it was put one beer that I poured and one beer that he poured right next to each other. Whose was better? That one. I, Tom didn't even fill. Yeah, the glass. but Dave, if it's the bartending challenge, like you're trying to see who's a better bartender, like I don't know why you wouldn't assume that every yeah. time. Yeah, right. And so much about it is how you pour it. If it's foamy, life. well. Of course he's And a I don't think anyone's bartender. arguing that. You yeah. just did. Arguing. No, I don't think. No, I don't no, no. set up a challenge. No, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say that. I'm saying. The other ones he can have. But the challenge is because you say he's the worst as a joke. As yeah. well, that, I mean, I'm not a bartender, though. I know. But, like, but that's, you poured, you poured that's a the, beer. Yeah. You, you worked it. Where did you say you worked for nine months? It was a bar. No, it was, it was much longer than that. It was in high school and college. It was like four years. What, what, I wasn't allowed what to pour out. It, it was at a golf course in Wheaton. Oh. Did you boost anything while you were a nice old teenager we all do oh, you want to transition a little bit sure we could do that i can say this all now because i'm pretty sure statute of limitations have passed and everybody that was involved in this is <laughs> was fired instantly Uh-oh. but oh when i when the very first night i started working there i was i think a junior in college um we i closed or a junior in high school rather i i closed so this is i don't know midnight probably in the mm-hmm. middle of summer and um, once everybody was out of the bar and we're all done cleaning up, my uh, my boss, who she played volleyball at Michigan State, she was awesome. I haven't talked to her in years, but she was awesome. I loved working for her. Anyways, she's like, yeah, bar's open. She's like, yeah, you can go grab one. And I thought it was like a test. And eventually everybody's just handing me like shots and shit. And I'm when like, you're 16 or whatever. Awesome. Yeah. So I would make myself drinks every fucking shit. <laughs> Every fucking shift. Everybody was. Everybody was completely wasted when we were serving. But eventually, it wasn't Tafer, obviously, or Taffer, but they had a consulting firm. The park, because it was owned by the Wheaton Park District, they had a consulting firm like send in over co- undercovers to see how much um, booze we were actually stealing because their profit margins. We were gutting them. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so eventually, this is after I stopped working there. But eventually, everybody got they fired. Um, and they, they, they were weighing, uh, kegs at the end of each night and go, they would do the math for sales. And if it was off by like, I think it was 10 grams or something, they knew people were yeah like stealing from the kegs mm-hmm. and that's how serious they, they got. So yes, Damn. we did boost a lot of alcohol from there. Like the entire staff, I would say tens of thousands of dollars worth of alcohol. Over the four years. Over like, over the years, yes. Yeah. There's a poll poll in the chat. Just made a poll. Who made who poured a better beer, White Sox Dave or Big Tom? Oh, thank you for how the do poll. You, how do you think, you, how do you think this poll is going to go? Didn't know you could do that. Wow, wait, there's a lot of White Sox Dave riders. Of course there are. Yeah, there's White Sox Dave Army, White Sox Dave. I White, actually White did Sox have Dave's a decent White amount Walkers. of people who said I won. <laughs> Not that I really care, but there there were. You'd rather win than lose. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Exactly. Yeah, I would say that as well. I didn't even know that that existed. Me that those neither. Consulting firms existed, where they go and see who uh, those should be more profitable businesses. I feel. Although, if you're in a situation where you need to hire them, you're probably not making money. You don't have the money to pay yes, for them. Exactly. Yeah. But it's kind of alarming how many places just give. Like you hear, like, oh, I know the bartender. Like every night I go, it's like. 11 bucks i mm-hmm. i had this bar that we would go to um for nfl sundays like when i was 20 th- i must have been 23 i went there when i was like for like two three years in a row 
we would get there at like 11 we would leave after the end of the sunday night game so we're like eating and drinking at this bar 10 hours all day long and the the bartender was this woman colleen she just loved us like we were just nice boys me and my buddy our tab at the end of the night would be like twenty four dollars. It was the best. It was awesome. No, listen, everyone's that was been me on, at Houndstooth forever. Everyone's been on the benefiting side of that. Yeah, you know, but I, I just always wonder how that shakes out. They're just charging customers they don't like a little extra every time. Maybe I don't know. No one really know if you cost a couple extra Miller. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. one's no one looking at that. That's right? true. Most would have room to give away. You know, like yeah, X amount of dollars, guy. X amount of dollars per night. But yeah, you're right. And like, there's something different, like draft beer. Like I think, right? It's harder to measure a keg than notice that. Yeah, yeah. ten like bottles they, are gone. Yes, they pro- and in draft beer they probably make that back. Like, I wonder how many draft beers at a bar pay for the keg, right? Like if you're if you're selling a draft beer for they're like three fifty, wholesale exactly. Yeah. Like probably how, guessing how many three dollars and fifty cents, like thirty or forty bucks. Yeah, sure. Per keg. Yeah, maybe that would even be cheap. I feel. Too. Yeah, big time. That'd be, I think it'd be. What's more the than standard? That. If really? I were to go purchase a keg of Miller Lite right now, would that be like 120 bucks? Yeah, I bought one last summer, and that's that's <laughs> like whatever. Well, like Damn, that's fucking that was inflation. Like, that was like was no, like that 100. was like with the tap, and that was with with everything. With the deposit, so I think the barrel might have been like a yeah, maybe like 90 to 100. Okay, but you'd also have to imagine the bars are getting it cheaper. That's what I just yeah, said. Yeah, wholesale. Danny. Yeah, yeah. Do you Sorry, know how to tap a keg? <laughs> Clearly. I, I've done it, but it's been probably like it's been since college. So we're talking like you seventeen s- years. You stick it in, twist it, and yeah. Pull I mean, it. I know, but, but like, I feel listen, like listen. If, if you if we did a keg tapping challenge, I think I would fuck it up. That's yeah, what that's I'm that's you what I mean. Wouldn't. Like you anyone, you can't fuck it up. It's, oh, you could fuck it you up. Could fuck dude. it up. Yes, Not you can. Really? Do you agree with that? That was my job as bar back. I switch out the kegs twenty times a night. Um, but there's good keg tappers and there's bad keg tappers. Would you agree with that? It feels not? like something I would fuck if up and then everyone would call me a pussy. If you've done it two or three times ever, you've, you, yeah. it's like riding a bike. You know how to do it. Well, like, you mean fuck up. You can't always control if it's, like, super foamy. It's always yeah. going to be. Oh, that that's different. Yeah. yeah. That's what. Generally, yeah. it's just but like you're, you're twisting talking, something into a piece. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If it's foaming, that's one thing. I mean, I, like, but I've you seen can't him flip a coin, so it, he might not be able to. But I'm pretty sure anybody with functioning arms and any never motor skills. You didn't get nearly never, enough heat for not being able to flip a coin, I don't think. I mean, why? I think I got a great amount of heat. No, I heard it about should, it, it should, everywhere I went. I it called, should be like on like CNN. I called a realtor, and he was talking shit to me about it. Good. Like, it was like, that, what do you, I'm still hearing the ramifications. I'm walking down the street, and people are like, hey. As you should Add be. Your tails. Eddie was here practicing flipping coins late night one one day last week. <laughs> I could, I mean, I could do it. I just was trying to put some pizzazz on. It's all a gimmick. All right? Yeah, it's all, all right. Right. Give it's me all a coin show. right now. No, yeah. no, 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 Danny. Um, but you oh, guys have never it. been in a garage when someone taps a keg and you're fucking first row at SeaWorld and everyone gets splashed? That's, that's happened. That's definitely been a thing. We can't pretend like it's not. You act like Dave like it's not a thing. There are it's, people who are like, hey, he's the guy who's going to tap the keg. He's the buddy who's like, he's got this under control. It's That's also, it's, it's one of those things that I would be like, I would walk out of the room to make sure no one asked me to do it too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and there are better taps than not as well. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I know a friend who had a nice, like, like a, actually like a pretty sick Miller tap. And then if you get the one from Binnie's or whatever, mm-hmm. it's not going to be as good. That's fair. I don't like how you're dismissing that tapping a keg like is not. I think you are trying to. This is one of the like straight out of the Red Ed playbook. That <laughs> That's you, what's the Red? What's you, the Red Ed you playbook? You are insecure about your inability to tap a keg, so you're just trying to say that nobody can tap it. No, tap a keg. I just respect the guys who are like, "Hey, I'm the guy." I'm Ed, the ca- I'm the you literally, guy. you pull the handle up, you push it down, you twist it in, and you pull it down. It yeah. is. As simple as that. Yeah, and, you, and you, you you tap a beer and you don't get it all over the bar. It's as simple as that too, Dave. Good call. Now, once again, you every you're supposed to just give it a second where it runs down the drain. And when I went to put the glass under it, it hit the other tap. Uh, now I, I want to challenge you to tap a keg cleanly and not get oh, it anywhere. We have to have a kegger at the office. Uh, we have one. Oh, we need Can we do that? Rater. You say well, one yeah, shot. It won't, no beer will spill anywhere. It won't squirt. You yeah. don't get him. it first shot, and what? it won't be foamy or anything. No, me. the foam that you can't control that. 
Is that confirmed? Can someone confirm that? You for me? that is like transportation. You need to let it sell and everything. That's what the air pumps for. You mean like once once it is tapped, once the beer comes yeah, out? Yeah, it, it might it, the foam. You can't control that. Mm -hmm. All right, but you're claiming right now you'll fucking zoom right in there and you'll tap it without I, an ounce Ed, of beer. Have you ever like anywhere. screwed two PVC pipes together? Or yeah, that's, yeah, that's it's not, but there's no. Have you ever tapped a bubbling keg? beer? Shout out Mikey C in the chat. Eddie is actually correct. You have to tap a keg correctly. There is a ritual when the keg is at a party. Thank you, yeah, Mikey it's C. Easy. Yeah, it's not like that. Like this guy acting like everything's so easy is it was, bizarre. It was a big deal Behavior. in college of like who was going to be who was going to tap the keg. Thank you. Yeah, a hundred percent. Here's what I think it is. It was a big deal, like because no one also wants to blame, and it's something so easy that I usually a guy there is like, oh, whatever. Are you gonna you're, give him shit for saying it's so easy? What? Well, I'm, I'm getting to my point. <laughs> and you're uh, there's usually a designated guy, or whatever. He doesn't want the pressure if it's foamy, even though it's not his fault, anyways. But if you do it like two times, like we were both barbacks, then you look back and like, wow, this is incredibly easy. I'm, I'm sure once you figure out how to do it, but also when you had kegs, you were younger. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really. Yeah, you're intimidated. Yes, and that, the that's the difference is that I, like I said, I would switch out kegs ten times a night, and I did that for years. What about all the right, first so one you ever did, right. though? Now there could be some. There could be some little challenges along the way. You get like a fitting that maybe have a little rust on it, harder to get you it in. You wouldn't do that, then. I'm not trying to get anybody uh, like tetanus. Maybe not rust, but say it's a little bent, whatever, harder to fit in the most. Then you have to if pull the lever bent, out. That has, if you have to have a. Well, like, this isn't going to be the same exact tap that you had when you were barbacking. Taps are taps. No, there's different fittings in each. I'm pretty sure they're universal, Danny. No, they're not. I the bar I worked at, different kegs within the same kind. Uh, they actually no. Looking back, that might be, yeah. So just be ready for that. But it, it's the same process for the most part. Yeah. Now I want like we got like I really want to get Taffer in here so he could put you through the ringer. <laughs> You're just like diminishing his business. No, I'm not. If you want to I start that business bartend. that Dante's going to fund, you, you got to meet with Taffer first and get the lowdown before, I, he, no, before no, no, he comes no. to you with I a camera. I just need Dante to open the bar and, like, give everybody that already worked there their jobs back. That's all. That's it. I don't have anything to do with it. I just go there, and I'm a normal patron. Do you get a discount? Yeah, of course I get a discount. Okay. I gave Dante my, like, five grand. But he gave up how much? Uh, More. I, what they say they wanted 910 <laughs> Yeah, or something. I think because I called the number, as, like asked them how that much that was they like want how much it costs for the building though. You can get a lease. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, Blues Bar, how much? They're like nine hundred ten. I, I think would that's love to list. have my own bar. I don't know that I would. It's fucking pain in the ass. But it's kind of like the same. Like, I would like want to silent. Run it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a place where I can go and drink. That's exactly the type of bar that I want. Get yeah, a social club. Yeah. Well, no. What do you mean? It's way better. You don't have to worry about patrons. You don't want in there. But sometimes you just want patron other buddy. patrons in there. I guess. Yeah. Do you sometimes want that? Sometimes. You yeah. want people you don't know? Yeah. You okay. don't like meeting new people? You well, know? you could like have like a little table outside. I mean, invite them in. what I want is meeting literally people does kind of stink. what I really want is the exact type of bar that's in Peaky Blinders. Where Social if I want to shut the chief. door, if I want to shut the door and just have like my own enclosed area yeah, and I reach a through a business. window. Then no, no one's like, everyone's like, oh, half the time I show up, the door's closed. Like, I don't know. No, it's there. Have you, you've never seen Peaky Blinders. No. You've never seen any TV ever. That's not true. Yes, it but, is. Yes, it but is. But why are you using Peaky Blinders as an example? Because they have a fully functioning bar where they have tables and everything for the patrons. And then they have this other room that's like off the bar that there's a door shut to it. And they don't have to mingle if they don't feel like it. They can invite people in. And then they have like a little window that they can slot, you know, open and close. Like almost like the back of a limousine where it's like, hey, you want to talk to the bartender? Pass so it's a like beer. a private room. That's what I just said. The oh, piggy boy. Yeah. You, you said shut the door. Shut I the door to the private door. room. You didn't say that. Well, I, I thought we knew what we're talking about with the, the Peaky Blinders bar. Hold on, never the seen garrison. Peaky Blinders. It's a mistake by you. It's a good show. It's an awesome fucking show. Dave, real quick. Chad is asking what you ended up doing with that check you got. Uh, nothing cool. <laughs> just adult stuff. Yep. Unfortunately, went to, uh, I got zero credit card debt now. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, Roback Activewear. We love Roback. Best fit, best feel, the quality, the comfort, the material. Everything is just top notch. 
What are you about to do, Dave? No, no, no. Uh, Keep going. Fresh that, off that of reminds me of something. The most comfortable performance joggers on this planet. You're not going to want to miss out on these. They're functional, they're versatile, they're comfortable, and these uh, joggers check off every box. Chief, you're wearing the hat right now. I love the logo. Yeah. I love. I mean, Dave and I, we've loved dogs. You don't love dogs so yep. much, but even if you don't love dogs, the logo's sweet, uh, simple, understated, and like all their clothes fit great. Uh, the performance hoodies, quite possibly the softest hoodies we own. They're paired with the performance joggers. Uh, we don't think it's possible to get a more comfortable combo. They also have the performance polos. Best polos out there. You can't find a better looking, better fitting performance polo. Even if you're not a polo guy, you will love Roback's polos. Get ready for spring with Roback. Use code MID on Roback.com for 20% off your first purchase. Through the end of this week, that's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all performance hoodies, joggers, and polos with code MID. Go do it. Well, you're going to go buy some Roback with that check you got? Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, I'm going to – I need a new pair of joggers because I, I wear those other ones like every Wore day. Wore the ass out of the other ones? Pretty much. I wash them like three, four times a week. You wear them like yeah. every day. They're that comfortable. <laughs> it's a good product. Go check out. It is the best day. product. I like don't take their clothes off unless I'm – they're disgusting and need to be washed. Yeah. Speaking of uh, – Speaking of Roe, I met, ran into my friend, my friend Roe Quan Smith, this weekend. Me too. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a nice time. We were at uh, a couple of places around Chicago. It's great to see him. He's, you know, the, the, the man, $100 million richer, but he still loves the city of Chicago. Yeah, he's doing his summer here. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I appreciate that. It was great to see him. Um, How do you say he likes it over there? He said he likes Baltimore, too, a lot. He yeah. Said, he said it's great. He said it's a great uh, – environment for him to be in he's you know he likes being a raven so is that all you're gonna say about that whole night oh uh what else do you want me to say about i that mean night? it was a pretty wild fucking night it was a very bizarre night yeah it was a very bizarre night i didn't get the invite well that's because you left i'll see what i got you the invite you didn't you we, didn't text he didn't call me either i got a call from a third party yeah. that was with eddie a third party he did I, yeah i uh, needed white Sox day partying with those nelk boys <laughs> you think that would have yeah. been uh but that was like this, like the Roquan thing. Like, so I show up to the first bar and there was like a line outside. And I was like, I was coming from the White Sox game. I was wearing like jot, like sweatpant joggers, a hoodie, this hot dog hat and everyone else. It was like a club. It was, uh, it was like a club. So they're, they're like, how are you? You're not getting in here. And I was like standing there being like, well, I'm kind of a bum and I'm fucked. Like I get it. And then I get a shove in the back from someone and i was like what the fuck and it was roquan so there's like so walk right walk right in with roquan and uh yeah because he's he's just like the nicest best guy in the world i yeah, love roquan pretty bizarre night yeah i got, i don't know how familiar like because dave you didn't really you didn't really know who the nelk guys were right no no yeah but they're huge like they're gigantic i, I so just had a like, like a 48 minute sit down with, with the trump president, yeah they're like they're trump. massive yeah. they were at me and dave and i and Danny and uh, and then Harry, we went to the uh, skateboarding event. So Dana White owns part of a skateboarding league. It's called the Street League Skateboarding, and uh, it was at Wintrust. And honestly, it was fucking pretty sweet. Yeah, it was cool. I, it was fucking slammed. I never envisioned myself ever like being uh, interested in skateboarding after Tech Dex or Tony Hawk Pro Skater too. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I was. Thoroughly entertained by how, what was going on. How happy were you that Tech Tech was a sponsor there? Tech Tech was a sponsor. Tech Tech's dude. back? Yes, dude. I didn't. Did they even leave? Who knows if they even left? But it was. It, so what they do with the skateboard only? Why they're different? And they were telling me. So their venues, they have to have them for a week because they actually pour the cement at these skateboard. No places. way. Yeah, yes. they put it on the basketball floor. Yes. That's what they're saying. So like they started pouring that shit on like Monday or Tuesday. And it had to set before the event on Saturday. Wait, so then how person. do they get it out of there? They, uh, they just break it up and they just get rid of that's it. That's a f huge process. Yeah, it is. It is. No, it is. But it's definitely worth it. He says that. What does that stadium hold? Like 12,000 maybe? Something like that probably. 10 and I'm guessing there was probably about eight grand there. Maybe 75% yeah. full. Yeah. There was a lot of people. There was, there was a lot of people. So, so after I thought you left. <laughs> so I left. And I went out the north end, like out the stairwell. And as I'm waiting for my Uber at the corner of the street, I, I see the, the like side doors that don't have a handle to get inside, but you can get out mm -hmm. from them. Um, I see, I see this guy sprinting out and he goes, get the fuck. I sent it to, did you watch that video? I sent it to you. Mm -hmm. He goes, get the fuck off me, you motherfucker. And then all of a sudden I see another guy come out and this kid, he's probably 20 years old. 
he starts running and they and they catch me go get off me you cocksuckers he's just screaming and he's like all i wanted was his who is the big skateboarder there where's uh Nigel. Nigel. his name is Nigel. Houston. that's what yeah he's like all i wanted yeah. was Nigel's autograph all i wanted was Nigel's autograph jesus and and he's just he's like resisting arrest fully <laughs> And eventually the police got there and had him pinned and, t- and took him away. It was pretty funny. I only got the last minute of it, so it wasn't, like, post-worthy. Dude, it was, like, chaos, the whole place, the whole thing that was going on. I, In, like, a five-minute span, a lady rushed the court, was flicking everyone off. She showed her tits. I mm. got fucking Rating. thrown out. Nice. Uh, I didn't see him. Someone you looked away or closed your eyes? Yeah. I, <laughs> both hands. Um, I, I didn't see it because I was talking to someone, and then... She, I saw her getting dragged out though, but apparently, like, I don't know, whatever. She had, was not right. someone who's tits you want to see. But speak for yourself. Not Sydney Sweeney. Not Sydney Sweeney. No. And then, legit, five minutes after, a guy on the fucking, he was on like a, like a ten, twelve foot platform filming. He fell off his fucking platform. Oh Jesus! Yes, it was like, yeah, dude, it was fucking scary. He fell off like onto con- onto the concrete, right onto the concrete. I didn't see this. Right onto his back, like slash oh, his neck. Fuck! It was fucked up, dude. It was insane. And what happened? Was he just laying on the ground for a while? He uh, he was laying on the ground. Then uh, it was kind of chaotic. There. I don't think they were prepared. Like I don't know if they had enough staffing or whatever. It was very weird. But then you know that like the EMTs or whatever come over, and they were helping him out. I missed and then that. He got well. You were gone by then. He got stretchered out. Sheesh. He did give the two thumbs up. Okay. And the Good place sign. went crazy. Yeah. But it was fucking scary to see someone fall that far straight out of the back. It was T- like 10, 12 feet is a huge fall. Dude, no, oh, it was, yeah. It was. I mean, it's easy, like, on top of that door frame right there. Like, easily that high, you know? I don't even know, like. Yeah. It would take a lot to get me to jump off of something like that. I know, yeah. right? Like, fucking like, turn an ankle yeah, or something. Yeah. He, he probably he landed on his back or something, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. He yeah. landed right on his back. So just I mean, that could be paralysis. Prayers for him. Dude, it was bad. And then, so that turns into us going to Happy Camper. Me and, uh, like, Bounce, fucking Joy District. Me and Chief. It was, it was a very yeah. bizarre night, but it was, uh, yeah. it was fun. Can I tell you something? Time. Yeah. I felt cool in there, <laughs> even though I looked like a, well, I looked like a bum, but I... What made me feel cool is that random people were offering me drugs. Like, I'm not a drug guy. Not a drug guy at all. Didn't partake in the drugs, but they're like, this guy, he looks like he might want some drugs. And I'm like, all right. I, feel, I must be fitting in all right. That was a good yeah. sign. Yeah, that was super bizarre. Uh, Club Ed made his annual appearance. Yeah, that was my annual appearance. I'm good for maybe two or three a year. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you were you were uh, bedridden, from what I understand. You were hurt. We also saw Tom's mom. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. That was funny. We went out for the draft. Um, we have to. We got to talk about that, Dave. I, I hate to throw you under the bus here, but uh oh, you never do that. I never do. <laughs> and that. you don't like doing it. I don't like. I I take no pleasure in throwing Dave under the bus. Yeah, you beat your fucking little <laughs> dick oh. nightly to throwing me under the bus. But go ahead. Some, some choice adjectives. <laughs> Dave, Dave got sentimental on the trip to New York for the draft at one point. Oh, yeah, that that is a little true. Okay, see, I could say it's not that is a little bad. true. All right, Dave, Dave got sentimental. Say time. his dick is big well, now. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, this is okay. So <laughs> what Ed's getting at is because this might be the last time we ever go out to New York City for work yes. related. Oh. At least the office, unless we have some event in Tom. the city or something. It won't be m- me because I have family out there, which sucks that I won't be getting those free trips anymore to visit them. Can, but we, can we play Vitamin C Graduation over there? Dave That's, that'd be a good song. It, it was, was like, I was like, you know what? That is a little sad. It is we a little sa- sad because yeah. I like hating things. Yeah. And every time I go there, I'm like, I just step foot in that garbage rat infested city. I'm like, this place fucking blows. And now that part of my life is not gonna be there and it's like a a, it's gonna be a void you you're gonna be like i want to take a picture of trash right now i'm gonna miss the little trash bags all over the street i i (laughs) on it it's weirdly enough i am gonna kind of miss those fucking piles of garbage on seventh avenue that's uh counting crow say tom it was bizarre that's what i'm trying to set the stage for tom here he looks up. He's like, "Can I say?" Because I told them, I was like, "You realize this is the last time I got one more trip. I'm gonna go." We off might have one more. You guys are the worst trivia team in the world, so you guys <laughs> probably aren't gonna make the tournament, and you guys are dead. So I was like, "This is your last trip." And Dave goes, "Man, can I say something? Can you like 
cut the cameras? That's this not is, true. You said this is bad for my brand. You said that word Did for word. That? Yes, you said this is bad for my brand. Don't get this on camera. It's like, I never said don't get sad. this on camera. You act like that's not a thing you say at all. You, yes, you did. You said, I, but you were I, joking. You were you were kidding when you oh, said yeah. it. You're yeah. like, this is bad yeah. for my brand. Yeah. I, I believe you did say that because yeah. we we Thank don't you. have that moment on camera. I, I get gaslit the whole fucking show. <laughs> see. Thank you, Lance. He said that you're like it's bad for my brand if I say this. I just thought Tom I, would appreciate it, I, that's that. something that's I, like completely. I can't joking. even. I don't even know if it's. I I just I'm in disbelief. Because like I said, Tom, I love hating your fucking dog shit city. <laughs> I, I know love you it. do. I love it. And speak of which, man, it really sucks that the Rangers lost last night. Uh oh. <laughs> that's that's just got to be an awful <laughs> feeling, being a little sports misery. Hold on, real quick, real quick. Uh, more labs, then we'll get into that. More labs. I don't know about you, but I can't drink as much as I could in college without <laughs> feeling like shit. Yeah. I mean, legitimately, we all talked about it on Sunday after that club night. Mm. Uh, even just a few drinks as you feel like crap these days. And in a world where we're being pulled in a thousand different directions, you can't afford to miss a day. More labs created this nifty lifesaver drink called Morning Recovery that helps prevent rough mornings after drinking. Similar drinks have existed in Korea for a long time, Ooh. and uh, but there were no options like this in the U.S. that worked. So their founder quit their job at Tesla to fix that and create Morning Recovery. It's super simple. All you have to do is drink one Morning Recovery while you drink or before you go to bed. It contains super herbs, uh, vitamins, and minerals that help you bounce back in a proprietary blend of electrolytes to rehydrate you. So you can have fun at night and feel good the next day. So I feel like a real human slash like you did when you were 21. They conducted a clinical study and users of morning recovery felt up 80% better than those without morning recovery across various symptoms after drinking. Uh, go to morelabs.com. That's morelabs.com. Use code MID for 20% off your first order of morning recovery. I heard this stuff's really good. I got to try it. So. I mean, they said a bunch of things that intrigued out. me. Yeah. yeah. That it was available in a foreign country like Korea. Yeah. I'm like, that sounds, that checks out. That sounds yeah. pretty good. Guy was at Tesla, so he must be smart. So he quit to do yeah. this. Like mm-hmm. the sound of that. Can't drink like he used to. Amen. Yeah. Can't do that. So I'm going to get on it. And like you said, I was on Sunday, I did nothing. I just laid on the couch. That's what Sunday's all, for. Yeah, but I was, I had, I was, we were in New York, so we had the travel day. I went out Friday. I had a, uh, like a bachelor party for my buddy, which ended at the White Sox game. I was like, all right, end of the, and we're like older. This is his second marriage, so I didn't feel like it wasn't going to be like a rager, but we were drinking like pretty good that day. I'm on my way to the Uber. I get the call. Um, From the, who? Uh, it was a third I'll, party. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. Um, Secret, 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 and it was a fa- it was a FaceTime action. It was, and Eddie was in the FaceTime. I was like, oh, what the fuck? So then I got bullied to coming out to the event, and then the next, so like that's just too much for me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just way too much. Yeah, and I I needed something desperately. It sounds like I needed this. I just didn't didn't know about it until just now. So yeah, I heard it's good, so I'm gonna try to test it out. Yep. Morelabs.com. They got other ones too. They got one that's for for work called Liquid Focus. They got a sleep one, which I, I think my sleep issues have been well documented. Called Sleep Well. So there check out go. Morelabs.com. Something for everybody. Um. So to the Rangers, they are, Re- really they're, quick they're though. Dead and buried. I'm suing Major League Baseball. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that sounds quick. Uh, like it's, <laughs> an, it's, it's, it's an official lawsuit that I forgot to bring up. Um, yeah, that's you awesome. guys <laughs> super quick. <laughs> You guys asked what uh, what I did with that money that I won in that class action lawsuit that I didn't know about until mm-hmm. I got the check. I randomly got an email from a lawyer uh, last week about a class action lawsuit that is suing Major League Baseball for, I don't know, something, whatever it Trauma. is. Trauma. I couldn't have fucking accepted that lawsuit faster. <laughs> so I have like the confirmation email here saying, oh, you won't pay anything unless we recover money for you. Uh, interested in learning more about our firm, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's in litigation right now. I don't know what they're suing Major League Baseball for, but I'm in. Okay. So hopefully Thank I have you. another check to update everybody on. Thank you, Dave. You're great. Uh, the New York Rangers got bounced, like you said before that, Dave. Mm-hmm. Um, I, your tweet was so funny. Can I laugh at that? Oh, yeah. Fuck did yeah. Did you see that, Tom? We, Tom and I already talked about it. Oh, you it. did? I don't think I've seen that. The Ra- so Truly, the Rangers, like, unbelievable. Rangers were now 1-0. And there were there were odds to like jump to like plus two twenty to win the to win the game, and White Sox Dave posted his bet slip. Got a got a couple of dollars in the account. Might as well throw some on the Rangers. The devil scored. 
instantly. It was 10 seconds. Maybe, was, <laughs> maybe 10 seconds. <laughs> and then, oh, your reply here is funny. Yeah, that's enough gambling for the evening. Yeah, that, <laughs> I had 285 bucks left in the account, so I'm like, all right, I'll throw 85 bucks and try to, you know, um, and keep two $100 bets for later on to lose, inevitably. So I'm like, I'll throw 85 bucks on this just because I don't give a flying fuck who wins this game. And Dave, that was perfect. Yeah. Within 10 seconds, 10 seconds, they went down two zip. They scored that second goal. The white side. Did you think about tripling down at all? I did. I did. (laughs) I didn't, but I did. The mush is alive and well. You couldn't have loved that when you saw that. No, honestly, it was like that. Things were just so bad at that point that I like a mush or a jinx thing wasn't. It wasn't even the first. Like it didn't cross my mind at all. You were were numb. I I honestly watched that entire game, and from my completely novice eyes, the Devils were beating the shit out of them, even before it was four zero. Yeah, I I thought my guy was the final nail in the coffin. It's Condre Miller when he took that penalty with what like. 12 minutes to go. You know what I'm talking about, Yeah, Tom? but I know, but that was a weird situation because it was like if he – if I feel like if he wasn't going to bully him on the ice, it would have resulted in a goal because Igor was nowhere near the net. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I suppose. Like, I, like that. I saw people, like, saying, like uh, – or the announcers were saying it was such a bad penalty and everyone – because I was like, wait, am I crazy? And then everyone on Twitter was like, I don't know why they're calling it a bad penalty. It would have like, the whistle, literally resulted in a goal. The, the whistle had blown – while Kane had the puck. So, like, that's when he threw it to the middle of the ice. I don't think he throws it to the middle of the ice if he hadn't heard the whistle. So then it just goes up the boards. I don't so, know. So it, it, I'd have to watch it back. But I that I don't know. That's that's where my head was on that, when he took that. Because they had a little bit of momentum at that point, like a, like a fraction, and then that penalty just ended it forever. Yeah, it was nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's tough. Tough. Yeah, not much. <clears throat> yeah, not much to say. I'm just kind of like numb right now. It's this is like the worst feeling ever. It's too and, soon. Uh, yeah, it's very soon. Just happened last night. Yeah. Uh, Let the boy recover. It's you know the way in which it happened. That fucking guy Pasha was right. <laughs> Don't uh, say that. Uh, <laughs> who's that? He's like uh, one of the Chicklets guys. I've, he's a he's a fucking. I've idiot. never seen such a 180 on like <laughs> the internet being against someone and then. He would just want it being right. So that's, you know. It's yeah. Uh, you got to fire a coach like immediately. I think Galant's got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Bring in Joel. I don't think he should take it. <laughs> okay. They they need to like really totally revamp their forwards. Yeah. And I like their D and Igor's. Igor's awesome. Yeah, but o- other than that. We're watching uh, the Henrik Lundqvist window all over again. It's going to be. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like it's like. And everybody's like blaming Patrick Kane. He was like the least of their problems. <sighs> Mika's not a 1C. He's not a 1C. Why was he getting blamed? Because the people are morons. Well, like, even in the game, like I was saying, like, Kane's got it going here. He started slow in that, that game last night. Second period, second and third period, he was probably their, their best forward. And then I, like, was, I said that. And then people are like, You're, what game are you watching? Blah, blah, blah. Then Gallant immediately starts, like, loading up, double shifting him. And then Ray Ferraro on the broadcast says the exact same thing, like, three minutes later. Like, he was. He had jump in his legs last night. They just – they couldn't make any adjustments the entire series. Like, they just – once the Devils, like, got their sea legs to him a little bit, it, it was over. It looked like they just beat the shit out of him. And that's the only game I watched of that series, yeah. but – But they have no forecheck. They the, have no reco- – they have no – See, like, like they that's can't recover all the puck. foreign language to me. Yeah. The Devils had so many good looks – Compared to, like, I didn't see hardly any for the Rangers. That's how I judge if you're getting your ass kicked or not. Yeah, well, and that's – yeah, but it's like there's stuff that leads up to that chance. Right, of course, And it's like they just – they fumble the puck away. Adam Fox, bad reads all night, bad bad puck management by the team as a whole. You hate to see that for New York fans. You really do. Nothing out of Bright side. Bright side. I mean, the Bruins are taking all the heat, so. Yeah. That's a – What seed were the Rangers? They were the lower seed in that turn in yeah. that series. Okay. They were they were the three. The Devils were the two. Yeah, yeah. So that's a bright side, right, Tom? Uh, no. I think no. it's probably the opposite. Right? No, it's it. There's no there's no bright side. This is like ab, like absolute doom and gloom. I era. think it is. Yeah. Is this like a, the Thanos meme? Like we got Aaron Rodgers as our quarterback. What did it cost? The Rangers blowing it. But you're a much more diehard Rangers fan, right? Not even. 
Yeah, until I Aaron Rodgers comes in and lights yeah. it up. Then, ever, then yeah. he's going to – Yeah, I mean, but it's not quite it, quick. It, if you were, see, I feel like if I were a Ranger fan, I'm going into game seven and the Bruins are already out, I'm thinking I got – I'm thinking cup now because it's like the, the big hurdle has already been eliminated. You can kind of see a path. So it's like it almost makes that loss even yeah. worse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like but... East was open. Uh, e- the way Igor was playing, if you if you plug him into like any other team in the playoffs, they like win the cup. Like he's, 100%. he's playing in a way that like it, he's spectacular. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And and there's like that that extra case of you have a hot goaltender, which is like something you can't even buy. You could have someone like even like Vasilevsky can like have like some cold games and like the, the, the Tampa Bay will get knocked out of the playoffs. You have like a great goaltender who's also playing hot, and you can't capitalize on that. That's like that's the most depressing thing there yeah, is. Yeah, but uh, that, uh, also uh, that guy, the Devils goalie, Schmid. Yeah, fuck that. I guy. had never even fucking heard of him two weeks ago, and he was. I've seen that a lot. He's incredible. Twitter, he was in the USHL yeah, that, two yeah. years ago. I just feel like that's not how hockey works. And I'm gonna it's say, not. No, no, no. I'm going to say that to a non to a, as a non big hockey guy, and you're a hockey guy, but you can't really look over overlook anyone in the playoffs. Like, Dude, yeah, the it, Bruins get bounced, but it's still like oh, like the path being open. Yeah, the path. I don't think the path was that. Dude, open. I think if there's Dragon Slade, like the team that won the entire, yeah, you can't overlook anybody. Yeah, right. You but can't, if you're clearly. if you're Toronto, and you're like, all right, gun to your head, you can play Florida or you can play Boston before that game seven. They're saying, give me Florida, a hundred percent of the time. Sure. Okay, and I think any other team would rather not have to go through Boston. Uh, and then it's like even like it's like a little thing didn't really help the Rangers very much in this series. But Florida sells a ton of tickets to teams from the Northeast, like in general. So they're not letting anybody from Canada buy seats uh, for this round. I saw but, that. They're so doing the Nashville. The old Nashville Predators yeah. move. Yeah. And the St. Louis used to do that. Carolina too. had to do that last year. With the, yeah. Against the Rangers. Yeah. So that's like one of those things where it's like you, you're not going to have like this insanely hostile environment when you're playing Florida. Like there's all those little factors. And it's like there is something where it's like these guys have been here before. Bergeron, McAvoy, Marshawn. Like you don't have to you don't have to face them. So I, if I'm Toronto or I'm New York or whoever it is, I'm glad Boston's out. Do you hate that move? Teams limiting who could buy the tickets. Yeah, I think it makes like have better fans. Yeah, I get that, but if you're the ones who are controlling the franchise, it's so embarrassing. When like the Chargers, what happened to the Chargers week in and week out? Yeah, in LA, oh, in their first year in it's LA, so embarrassing. I mean, I think it still happens, kind of. Yeah, I could be wrong, but, but that was so when they were. In the, I feel like they were in that MLS stadium when it was like they, would they only were in the Coliseum. Like, That's what it was. Was yeah. it? That yeah. was the Coliseum. I thought. There was like twelve people. I thought there. that was the Rams were in the Coliseum, and I thought the Chargers were in a uh, were in the mm. the M- like one of those teams out there played in an MLS stadium. It was like thirty thousand people, and then they played the Eagles, and it was all Eagles fans. Yeah, that's like but to get in front of it. Like as an exec, I, I don't blame the execs. <laughs> I wish they had better. I think they wish they had better fans too. Yeah, you know, probably it sucks. But. but I wonder if it's like. You would think that your playoff tickets would just be sold out. You know, you would hope. You would hope, Chief. You would hope. You would certainly hope. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about Talkify? I can tell you about yeah, Talkify. Tell me about Talkify. Talkify yeah. is, um, it's like it's to help you know probably adults do some dating. So life is full of what ifs. So what if you're uh, what if you try something new when it comes to dating? Talkify is a new way to meet other serious singles. What if they would help you find what you're looking for? Uh, are you having a hard time meeting great people to date? Why do you keep trying the same methods over and over if you know you're getting set up to fail? It's time to say goodbye to swiping and bring back the human touch to dating with Talkify. Talkify is the country's number one modern matchmaking service that is designed to help you achieve relationship success. Their trusted uh, compatibility specialist hand select successful and compelling candidates so you can date consciously and productively. Here's how it works. Talkify uh, the Talk 5 matchmakers meet with you to learn about what you're looking for in a partner. Then they'll select and screen potential match candidates for you, doing the background checks, video interviews, and asking the tough questions that are too awkward to ask for first dates. From there, your matchmaker plans 
your date, introductions, and handles all the communications for you, creating a safe and stress-free dating experience. Talkify is committed to finding your match. 80% of clients met their person within the first wow. 12 matches. 80%, can you believe that? It's a high That's number. Good. That's actually a high number. So if you're looking, you know, you're trying to get married, it's... Batting 800? What's your, what's your... It's good. If you're swiping, Dave, what's your hit rate? Probably less than 80 three <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so uh and right now talkify is offering our listeners 20 percent off if you become a client at talkify.com slash mid so that promo code is mid uh talkify that's dot com slash mid for 20 percent off when you become a, a client talkify slash mid so check it out uh i talked to one of the uh representatives uh the matchmaker people they do the screening just i was curious about it it's great. It's easy. Super easy. So I uh, encourage everybody to uh, to check them out at Talkify. Dave, did you have your eyes on anyone at the Bet Gala yesterday that you wanted to? I honestly didn't even talk-ify. know what was going on until this morning. So no. But uh, I saw, and we're talking about Sydney Sweeney, right? Your girl. We're talk about anyone. Sydney Sweeney wasn't the only one at the um, Gala. I do think Kendall Jenner is just like beyond fucking hot. I she, agree with that. She is. She's my number one. So um, hot. She's your number one? Number mm-hmm. one uh, of the Kardashian. Family. Oh, okay. You know, All right. Kardashian, Jenner, Dave, clan. Would, would you poop on Kendall Jenner's chest? I was, I was no, I would not. Dave? Um, <laughs> Dave. You on. would. It's gross for her, not you. Yes. No, it's gross it's, for everybody. Yeah, no, it's gross for everybody. You know how much Mexican food I eat? Oh, yeah. it's gross for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus. <laughs> you guys brought it up. Well, um, we're, not taking, we're not talking after the Mexican snowman shit. We're talking after a nice hearty oatmeal shit. Like a nice... Hello. Yeah. Fiber one of too. too. a nice suppository. Um, hey, you just take a, I'm going to switch the take a dude subject wipe and to yeah. Sydney Sweeney. Mm-hmm. She has fantastic tits. That's that's what it <laughs> is. That's I, what it is. I didn't understand. And she gets naked in everything. She does. Yeah. I don't think that's happening as much anymore, I believe. What um, do you mean? Well, an, well, I never watch you for you, but. No. It's a, honestly, I think it's a great show. I know. you. It's know. a fucking <laughs> great show. The reviews that's, are in. But <laughs> it's a great show. What's wrong with that? No, I'm just laughing at how the whole world was like watching and live tweeting uh, that show. And uh, like the day after the season finale, you started it and you were like, Euphoria is a great show. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. It's like, the world's been I'm saying a, that. It got more viewers after you, the Super Bowl. You but. were like live tweeting the episodes. Like I wasn't from live tweeting. Has anyone shit. heard of this Euphoria show? Aside from just saying, yo, Euphoria is awesome. And Zendaya, she's going to win, like, a billion Oscars and, and Grammys throughout her her life. She's a fantastic actress, I think. Um, she was great. She was phenomenal in that show. She, like, you could see the depression <coughs> in her face. But um, Sydney Sweeney, oh, what the, f- Voyeur? I saw the Voyeur, yeah. She's in a, do yourself a favor and and pull up the Vimeo or whatever it is for Sydney Sweeney. I've never seen the movie. I've been directed to check it out. Check out this scene that Safe those Search watching. Off. Safe it search is off. full blown pornography. Okay. okay. Don't look that up. I just searched up WSD. Let's get it on the screen. There are five tweets mentioning Euphoria. What did I say? Uh, one said, uh, super late to the party, but Euphoria is the most twisted, fucked up show I've ever seen, and it's outstanding. There's one per. There's not one person I don't absolutely loathe in Euphoria. Maybe the heroin dealer, and he's a piece of shit too. Uh, <laughs> he's like the best guy in the show, and he he's a fucking heroin dealer. Uh, that's all I got for now. Hope it gets done. It's October twenty two. Twenty two. <laughs> Let's ride back to Euphoria for the time being. It all I leads just, back to one road. I just got back to the part in Euphoria where Cal comes out and tells his family to fuck. Oh, up. that's one of the all time great scenes in TV. Do you remember what scene that is? When the dad just like goes on a fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's a lot longer than that. It is awesome. It's like laugh out loud funny, I think. Have you seen the show, Tom? Yeah. You know what scene yeah, I'm talking about? Yeah, it was a great about? scene. Yeah, like after he like basically leaves his family. Yeah. Yeah. I was... he, he, he basically is like, hey, you're not my family. It's a father to the, his kids and wife. He's, He's like, a yeah. He's a real piece of shit. Well, he is, they're all pieces of shit in some way, somehow, but... Takes you think a piss so? on his front door. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah I forgot. Oh no, you yeah. peed like in the. Uh, I, what's his name? Who? Jared Leto. He had like a cat outfit on. That was fucking weird. 
You didn't see that? Mm -mm. How did you not see uh, that? He's the weirdest. He's open, but like you tell me, Jared Leto, I'm gonna assume it's something fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. like he, he's, he's, he's exclusively guys. weird. I heard he lived in an actual meth house or crack house or something in in like New York. Oh, that's like the most realistic cat suit I've ever seen. Yeah, it's pretty good, huh? No, he looked. I mean, what are you doing? Oh, the suit's good. Wait, that looks like a Photoshop. Realistic? It does kind of look like a Photoshop. Are we getting duped? No, this is real. No, I thought that, but it's real. Is the, is the Met Gala just Halloween? For Jared Leto, apparently. apparently. For, For like celebrity. everyone. There's, you know what else there's I, I, I didn't really shit. love? I saw uh, Margot Robbie getting a lot of shit for how she looked at the Oscars or at the Met Gala. I saw like I was scrolling through TikTok early this morning. I saw multiple things pop up about her, like not looking good. She looked fucking awesome. So I don't like I don't understand like how they judge people. Like pull up if you could pull up Margot Robbie, because yeah, like what the, what's wrong with that? It's, it's too normal. Yeah, it's yeah. too basic. Chief, well, little Nas girl. X looked like the Tin Man walking around. I Jared Leto's wearing a cat these outfit. Fucking yeah, but you get Cox. You, see, I think she looks fantastic, mm -hmm. and that's that's what people should be wearing, not fucking cat suits. Cook. Yeah. Well, there's a theme every year. What was the theme? Oh, really? I didn't uh, know that. Carlographer. Hmm? I don't know what that word is. Are you oh, just making up words over there, Tom? Oh, you didn't know this? Th that's like... Uh, I knew they had themes, actually. The The theme was Carl Lager Lagerfeld. I don't know who that is. Have you been to the Met Gala, Tom? Not actually the event, but like like outside of it? The Met? It's like the Met? Yeah, the Met, yeah. I went to school like down the block, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like our museum. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was... Uh, I saw one video of Sydney Sweeney. This has got to be the most degrading thing on earth is being the dress holder, like the back of the dress. <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, I mean, it happens to a lot of women though. Like that's at wedding season too. Like sometimes mm -hmm. you gotta well, that's take a, care of the that's a wedding and it's like tradition. This is just like, Hey, you're a peasant. Come hold Sydney Sweeney or AOC or whoever's dress. You do it though. You holding up that like dress a little too high in like a quagmire way? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Not even like if the, if the check was right, I'd fucking hold. Hey, hey let, me, yeah. let me hold your dress for you. Let me I, your dress I follow you. this this random Instagram account. It's like best of Family Guy, and I think Family Guy's fantastic. I don't think any of you guys watch it, do you? I used to. Uh, I went through like nope. a phase. I, I, I love it. It's a perfect TV years, show where you years. can watch like four episodes in a row, like when you get off work, because it's always on TV. It's kind of like Seinfeld. But yeah, that's the one I was I, I was talking about. And they're at the uh, dinner table, and they have some guests. And I saw they did this on the bracket the other day. Like dra uh, they drafted like hottest cartoon characters. They made this obviously th oh. th this girl. Do you know what I'm talking about? Quagmire. Then Quagmire, and she's like, "Man, my back really hurts. Can <laughs> yeah. we get a different chair?" And Quagmire like made himself into a chair, and she's using. And he's like her her ass is on his face as a chair, like and he's like, back. "Oh God." <laughs> yeah, like his mouth. Can you pull that right? up, Tom? Pull up that clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pull up. I don't know what the rights or... is, but it's like a 10 second clip, and it, it literally, yeah, I was getting seconds, in, we'll get by. in oh, an ad workout laughing my ass off when I saw this clip yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let me see Quagmire as a chair. As a chair yeah. Who else did they have on that bracket, Dave? Um, Lola, I assume? Lola Bunny. Lola oh, Bunny. Jessica Rabbit. Obviously, Lola Bunny's on there. The old version, not the new one. <laughs> you don't like those long shorts? No, absolutely not. Green M&M &M on there? Dexter's mom. Elastigirl. I don't oh, know yeah. who that is. They're incredible. you never seen the Incredibles? Oh, I, I have seen the Not in a long time. Ask for Miles. Does she? Animated Ask for Miles. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're saying you want to bang a cartoon character? Literally, she could stretch. Dan, what do you think about Nala getting a 14 seed in oh, that? Oh, shit. It's all here it is. Hold on. But no big deal. People make that mistake all the time. Oh, right. You know, I don't mean to be rude, but do you have a more comfortable chair? <laughs> this one's really hurting my back. <laughs> oh, my God. Quack my ass. <laughs> you come out from under there. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I just wanted to meet her so bad. That's it. I can't do anything right. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> you like that? <laughs> it just made me. It was. That's why Family Guy's great, because the, like, the uh, randomness. You uh, don't expect it. You do Family Guy and you do South Park. Yeah, right? they don't like each other. Yeah, they don't. They don't? No. I didn't know that. Well, South Park always shits on Family Guy. I don't think Family Guy's ever said anything about South Park, though. Why would you? That's like 
Yeah, you can't. You can't, can't, poke, can't poke the bear. Rome, yeah, that's. You know I mean? it's is is bad Family idea. Guy still making new episodes? I think they I both know. are. I want to say South Park is. Yeah, I believe the story behind Family Guy was they stopped. Well, they and got then canceled and they came the, back. And no, no, no. But their they, DVD uh, sales not like. 2023 canceled. No, like, it was just like their ratings yeah. were done. And then yeah. their DVD sales went through the fucking roof. So like, oh, we got to bring these guys back. And then yeah, I think they did like one or two seasons and then they shut them down. And then exactly what you said, like yeah. there was like an outcry. They brought it back, right? Yeah. Um, I think Family Guy is more consistent because each episode's like at least pretty funny. Mm-hmm. South Park has some duds, but South Park at its best is unmatched. Mm-hmm. I think that's... You're not a Simpsons it. guy, though. I'm, I'm a Simpsons guy. Oh, you are? I mean, oh. not anymore. Yeah. I'm part but of a Saturday morning cartoon rotation. Yeah, how many animated guys can South he have? Park, Simpsons. What's that? How many animated could he have? I feel like. You watch a lot of animated shows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if there's any others other than those three. F is for Family, Bob's Burgers. No. Futurama? No, I never got into Futurama. Um, what's, the, what's the popular one on? Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Rick and Morty's very popular. Nope, never got into it. I mean, uh, you're Big saying Big Mouth is popular too, right? Mm-hmm. Never even heard of it. I don't think Big Mouth. No. You're saying I'm into animate animated cartoons. <laughs> I didn't say you were into anime. <laughs> no, I said animated. <laughs> oh, I anime. Said anime. But those are, I mean, Family Guy and South Park. Are yeah, two, they're two titans for sure. Yeah, they're, yeah, no doubt. And about Simpsons. It. I'm also sorry for you, Dave, that the Late Late Show with James Corden has been canceled. I hate that cunt. So I apologize. I know He's such morning. a cunt. I know you're mourning. They say this might be, I saw Jerry Thornton's blog today. It could be the death of late night talk shows. Everything's dying. Yeah, it, there were some like alarming stats. Apparently, the Late Late Show was costing $60 million, 60 to 65 and it was netting less than 40 Well, wasn't was that the one with Corden? Yes. Wasn't he making like thirty million dollars a year? So yeah, I'm that, sure his his money was. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's. I don't understand how they justify some of these salaries. Like, who are they compete? Like, where's James Corden going to go? Who are they competing against? Give him two million. Yeah, but if you got a guy that people like, it's easier to kind of like, hey, how can we build him up and make him? Yeah, better? but they but they don't. I think they did though. For I think, a minute, when he had the the carpool karaoke, yeah, 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 like, that's what but I'm that saying. was like I feel like that was bigger on YouTube yeah, than th- it was on the actual show. Well, that's the thing. At one point, did they just fully convert to YouTube? Because I think like Kimmel and Fallon's YouTube are just uh, mega. I, like I think they don't they do mega numbers, Lance. I think so. The the last carpool karaoke was with Adele. Shout out Adele. Um, I last I looked, it had a Adele seven needs some shout outs. Seventeen million. When when <laughs> was that? Five days ago, six days ago. Oh, is that recent with her? Yeah, seventeen oh, million know. views on YouTube. Yeah. Or... yeah, I don't know. It's but it says here Johnny Carson would draw ten million viewers a night back in the pre-internet era, pre-cable era as well. <coughs> Letterman averaged three to five, um, and that's his competition <laughs> oh, was pretty big. And now all three eleven thirty p.m. stars Colbert, Fallon, and Kimmel reached five million combined. Do you think that it's possible that those guys, just, all those shows, just stink? I mean, sure. Like, if you had a good host, like I, I, they're also so limited, man. Like, how so? Of what they could do, they're severely hamstrung. Well, I mean, but like, I think you could. You don't think that Letterman and Leno, if they were in their prime today, that they would they wouldn't be better than those guys? I because I kind of think that they would. I think so. I think they'd have a longer leash and have more of the benefit of the doubt and like. Tougher jokes. I, I, would I say. think Corden, Fallon, and Colbert are. They drive me. They all three of them bother me. Like they, they all like just kind of get under my skin. I've heard like, Jimmy. Did I? Come isn't Jimmy my Fallon call? like a closet complete douchebag too? I don't even know. No, if it's I've cl- heard different. Oh, but who knows? I, 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 who knows? I, Maybe I'm thinking. Of I don't else. even think it's a closet. I think what? it's. He's just. Yeah, like he's just kind of a. He's like, an asshole. He's an, yeah. o- he's an open douchebag. I see. Yeah. I've heard different. I don't like don't behind know the scenes. People. That's why I hate Corden. So Gordon's much. stories are like the yeah, worst. They're, yeah. they're what's her face? Ellen. Ellen. She he's the guy Ellen. Yeah. I well there's actually kind of some people. juice to that because like he was like banned by yeah, the, restaurants like New York and, City's like top restaurant groups. Yeah. And after that, all the other like stories of people that Correct. don't really have platforms, yeah. they all started coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. Like what just a cocky is. I watch it wasn't your face. Who's an all who's Danny? Who's another like he's a pretty Hardcore. Comic. I would watch Ricky uh, like a late night show guy. No, he's late a night. comic, but he's pretty not. Is he English? No, he's not English, but he's like a pretty 
Like, shoot you straight. Doesn't care what the fuck he says. It's Jim Jeffries, uh, Bill Burr, Louis. I don't know. Jim Jeffries is... I don't know. No, he's not a talk show host. So he's a comic. Okay. I need, I need on, more than that. He, whatever. He went on... Um, he went on Rogan before, and he's like, yeah, I wrote so much shit for Jimmy when I was like, what the show? And he's like, hey, man, this is all really funny. We just can't air it because it's too, like, risque. Yeah. You know? So there is, like, there is an element. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm pretty sure Colbert and um, Campbell have gotten, like, super political. Like, you don't have to do that. You think? You don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, I just don't know even if they And that was, like, back in the path. day, like, when Leno would do, like, his little, his opening monologues, and he would just, like, oh, he made it. Who? Jessel Nick. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That's who I well, was Well, he's like the extreme yeah, opposite of the extra. That's spectrum. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that's kind of gave you a good mm-hmm. hint, but not really. Yeah. But, like, I, I feel like Leno would take, like, oh, like, he would make his Monica Lewinsky jokes and he would make, you know, a couple of Bush's stupid jokes. And, and, but now, like, and then and it was fine. Like, right? It was fine. But, like, it now you're right. Like, it's so political. It's so political. And everything is. I think a lot of people want to get away from that. Yeah, like want I, I want to just not, have a good time and yeah. laugh. I don't want to like be lectured. Yeah, I feel like they lecture. But a me. lot of people do want to be that. that because no, they don't. A lot of people do though. There's a lot. There's then a why big are they, market. Then why for, is it the end of late night? There's a big market for that as well. That's what I'm saying. And some it doesn't, of these, yeah, you look at some of these that. companies with subscribers who are like mega because I, they all I talk think, politics. Yeah, but like CNN's going down. Yes, Fox News is in big I'm trouble. I'm talking more internet. Oh yeah, like that because, but I feel like they're like the breaking points people. They just do it better and different. Um, yeah, like Conan did it pretty well. He wasn't annoying about political shit. Really, I, yeah. would, I would agree. It's a good point. I feel like when did he get out? His last show was uh, November twenty twenty. Okay. So oh, he, that was more recent than I would have guessed. Yeah, yeah, oh wait, I sorry, sorry. The fu- it said they announced the twenty twenty final episode aired on June twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. Hmm. Oh, okay. I can't say that I, I watched his. I got a question. I'm watching this. I pulled it up just to see the views. It was 17 million eight eight days ago. So, very successful franchise for car- carpool karaoke. Well, <clears throat> the reason it's all in the news is the writer strike. Yeah, the writer strike is why this is relevant. Yeah. So like, I don't I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I don't know anything about it either. Yeah, Tom. get into that a little bit. I saw Tom. the writer strike. Was talking about that, well, that's just why I, all this is in the news right now. It's because there's a, a writer strike, and uh, this is it. I guess like all, like all these guys are saying that they're gonna. Uh, shut down production. Okay. Like in solidarity Alan, with Kim, the Uncle Bear, Seth Meyer, I forgot he was still kicking. I also think that podcasts have kind of made those co- types of conversations yeah. where it's like five minutes of fluff bullshit, just like mm-hmm. not as appealing when you can do like long form and have like actual interesting conversations. Sure. I think with, you know, with real people, I think that is a more appealing way to spend your time than, Oh, here's my clip of my movie, and I had a funny story at a restaurant. Uh, LOL, and mm-hmm. then let's get to commercial break. Yeah, like yeah. Just, come sing in my car. Yeah, I don't that's what I'm asking though. Like, Dell's driving this. Can I? Could I just get in a car in England and drive? Yeah, if you have a license, hundred percent, you can rent a car on the on the wheel on the other side. That's a that's I, that's you, a good question. Though. You definitely <laughs> can. Yes. Oh, I I yeah. I'm, I'm, I didn't know. I've never that's been the, there. Yeah, that's the answer. They, that would, I don't know there. if I'd want to though. Have you done that? Have you driven? Yeah, it's fucking weird. It is. It's got to be fucking. Yeah. Is the are the gas pedal and? No, that's the same. It's the same. same foot, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if that would be that impossible. That'd be diabolical. Yeah. But it's just yeah, like even crazy. the. It's even when like, you're trying to like make a turn at an intersection. You're like, oh, like if it's if it's here, like you know, like you're trying to judge right. the time. Like you have to be. I don't know. I felt I was like abundantly cautious because I was worried, looking both ways multiple times. I mean, Adele's just slinging along here yep. in this Los who Angeles does, neighborhood. Who well, does the right way? I don't think they're actually driving. No, they're not driving. They're getting pulled. By yeah. Oh, guys, really? Yeah, little movie tip guys. They yeah. no one ever drives in movies. Typically, they're on. They're getting towed by a in the person in front of them. I've been lied to my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. For that one. Well, can continue with this. Yeah, this, dude. They're trying to do stuff. That'd be like kind of dangerous if they actually did do that. I just huh. assumed it was either like a green screen situation or that they were like driving on like a lot. Where no, like right Sopranos, camera? like all those things, like you're like Meadow and Tony arguing in the car. Yeah, like that's mm-hmm. all. No one's driving. They're all on a hitch and they're getting pulled. What? Because because imagine how, how else would you get that like clean camera shot? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, but it's I, I just I, figured they were on the dash. I, yeah, that's what I thought, too. It was like dash cams. <laughs> 
<laughs> like they had it's multiple like dash out cams. Santa isn't real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes see they, karaoke just stink for me. They think <laughs> about the camera people when they're you know before before. Yeah. They, just like Dave does. Just like Dave does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Also, the cameras on the outside of the car. Is that what that is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's surprising too. <laughs> you guys, are, your minds are blown. Yeah. <laughs> What's the point of having? Well, I guess you need the nice interior. <laughs> Can Adele just drive? <laughs> I mean, that was a different question. <laughs> well, I I was serious because that's what brought it up. I'm like, wait, can she just drive in, in the America? state? Yeah, I think that's a fair question. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But um, I like America. I'm Team America. <laughs> but? I do. I will say this, and I will end on this. If we're ending the show, I think that our units of measurement are completely fucking stupid compared to the rest of the world. I'm sure cheap doesn't, but I don't know why we didn't go to the metric system. They like, tried. And we we're just like, fuck one your, million years. Fuck ago. your Euro math. Wait. Euro math. It's math, math. It's base 10. Everything. Yeah. Everything's based on 10. I know. Yeah. That's the worst. Like getting in a car in Mexico and you know, it's like, yeah, but like, well, what? Oh, oh, I had that kilometers. I just yeah. divide I had that it by problem. two thirds or oh, multiply it by two thirds. I had that problem when I w we had the, um, the the pond hockey tournament up in like way north um, Ontario. When I get in the rental car, and they're you, you know here they give you both. I feel like typically on cars you get the kilometers per hour and the miles per hour. This was just kilometers, so I was just like. I have no idea how fast I'm going. I'm just kind of guessing. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like two thirds going with the flow. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, exactly. Just trying to go with the flow of traffic. The losers that I root for, they were in Toronto last weekend. Just Who's be that? funny. Yeah. They uh they were putting kilometers per hour on this and I'm like, what are you doing? And some Blue Jays fan is like, I live in Toronto. We don't even use kilometers per hour for baseball games yeah. here. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's like hundred and fifty seven miles an hour. I'm like, what are you doing? How how would we if you want to switch, how would we do football? Hundred meters? Yeah, you know, just But change. no, you can do it for football. Everybody knows that. But like, like, do you know how they came up with those units of measure? You can enlighten me. Okay, so like this right here, an inch. That's a. It was the king's inch. Okay, you get twelve of those to make a foot. A foot. King's foot. King's foot was twelve inches long. I don't know what a yard was, but I know those like King's it was. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but that's that's what that was. It was just like literally. It was like, well, how many? How far away is it? Well, how yeah, far? Yeah. Uh, marathon's 26.2 because that's how far it was, it was in Greek mythology. I the, thought it was 26 miles start to finish, but the palace was another two tenths of a mile. So for what? Or something like that. I know there's a story in Greek mythology where there's somebody had to like, they either won a, won a battle or lost a battle or something. And he had to run to the next town to like tell people that were warn people. And he ran there with some urgent message and then he just collapsed and died. Hmm. It was 26. I didn't miles. do that. I finished it. Well, he ran the whole time. Oh, he didn't. He collapsed and died. At the end, but he ran the 26.2. How does uh, and I think it might Samuel have, I think the guy's name might have like, been Marathon. Great far north to the wall to warn them about the army of the dead. That never made sense to me. It's cold, In like huh? a day. It's a carriage. No, he didn't. Well, I mean, if you, if you did that with movies every time. <clears throat> uh, Phidippidus. Chief, if I pronounced that right. Yeah, something like that. A Greek messenger, the legend states that he was sent from the battlefield of Marathon to Athens to announce that the Persians had been defeated in the Battle of Marathon, in which he had I just think that was fought. Demopoly. Just telling you what Google says, which took place in August or September of 490 BC. So he fought in a war, in a battle, then ran 26.2, then collapsed and died, and he never stopped. It's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, grab a beef kit, tastefulchicago.com. Use code MIDSHOW, and you get 25% off today. That's two words. Yeah, Mid two words, MIDSHOW. Show. Like, your, you know, like mm -hmm. your graphic, Space. like your everything. Um, and, oh, we, we'll, we'll, we'll be breaking on the Bears draft um, on uh, Thursday's show. I have, have a nice little expert come on talk about it. So, well, uh, tune in for that. I haven't asked him yet. Yeah. Well, no, well we I got. I got. I got two guys guy. I'm working on right now. Okay. I already. I already uh, said I'd come on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of moving and shaking. Um, thanks everybody for listening. That's it. We will uh, see you guys on Tuesday.